Good morning. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and start uh, chapter 20. This is 20.1. You'll turn in your book to that page. It's like 381 or something like that. It starts out by reminding us that back in section 13.5, we briefly played with what we called congruent shapes. That is, shapes that are identical in form even if their location is different. And it gives you some congruent rectangles there. It's time to explore congruency in more depth, coupling it with some of the other tools you've learned. So not only can shapes be congruent, but so can lines and angles. Notice that the two lines below are the exact same length. They're both half an inch long. If we were to move them on top of each other, they would be identical. In other words, they are congruent. Turn the next page. Likewise, these angles are exactly the same degrees. Even though one is facing a different direction, if we were to move them on top of each other, we'd find that they were exactly the same. So they too are congruent. As you already know, a square has four equal sides and equal angles. We could also say that those sides and angles are congruent, since if we were to put them on top of each other, they would be identical. So there's you a square marked with all four um, of the uh, 90 degree angles. Now, look at the gray box. This says term subtleties. While congruent is very similar to the word equal, their meanings are subtly different. Congruency refers to the forms being the same, that they would be identical if they were put on top of each other. On the other hand, equal means being the same in quantity, size, degree, or value. Equality refers not to the form of something, but to a specific measurement about it. However, congruent lines also have equal sizes, or they wouldn't be the same form. And equal length lines are also congruent if they're the same length. They have to be the same form. So you see that uh, equal and congruent can mean the same thing, yet they're not the same thing. All right, so how do we represent congruency when we look at, a, at uh, an object? It's often helpful to visually show congruent sides and angles. There are many different ways we do this. We could use color to show congruency, making lines that are the same length and angles, they're the same degrees, the same color. For example, in the figure shown, and it's the figure at the top of 383. Um, each different shade of gray could be a different color to show congruent sides and angles. But coloring lines and angles can get frustrating very fast. And what if we don't have coloring materials available? So look at the top of 383. Another option would be to actually put the dimensions of each side or angle next to it. Notice how cluttered it becomes and how difficult it is to take it in at a glance. That's, that's the second that, uh, object that you see at the top. It's that same object, but just with all of the degrees inside, the degrees of the angles, and of the measurements of the sides on the outside. You just look at it and it gets confusing. So, to better show congruency, it's common to use tick marks on the sides of shapes and arcs on the angles. Sides with one tick mark are congruent to all other sides with one tick mark. Those with two tick marks are congruent to all the other sides with two tick marks, etc. Likewise, angles with one arc are congruent. Those with two arcs are congruent, etc. So you see that how they put that in there. <laughs> to me, when I first look at that one right there in the center of the page, it kind of looks like what your science book would show, like an atom or something would look like like a microscope, through a microscope or something. All right, so there's a note right below this uh, third diagram. There's an exception with angles. We still use the L-shaped marker for right angles. Remember, ma angles that measure 90 degrees. Notice in the triangle shown, the right angles are marked with the L-shaped markers. And the other four anger angles have a single arc to show they are congruent with each other. So if you'll look at that very last diagram there at the bottom of 383, those two triangles together, notice that the 90 degree angles have the little L marks inside of them. The other angles have one arc showing that all of those are uh, congruent, okay? All right, so in the next lesson, we'll apply congruency to help us find missing measurements. 
such as the distance across a stream. But for now, though, just get used to the term and familiarize yourself with how congruency is shown. Tick marks and arcs are a convention to help us easily show that certain sides or angles are congruent. Okay, so with that being said, take out your worksheet. It's worksheet 20.1. <clears throat> so I'm going to kind of go through a few of these and help you. Now on number one, you've got A, B, C, and D. So uh, it says use the tick marks showing which sides are congruent to find the length of the sides requested. All right, so A is what is the length of ED, line ED. So let's go over here to this thing and find line ED. Okay, it's at the bottom of, the, of that picture. And there's three tick marks. Okay, so that means we need to go find another line that's got three tick marks until we find the length. If you'll look straight up, you'll see another line, AB. It's got three tick marks. That shows us that those two with three tick marks are equal. It only gives us one measurement, and it's on the first one, AB, and it's 28 inches. So for letter A, your answer is 28 inches. All right, so on letter B, what's the length of line DC? So find DC, it's got one tick mark. Okay, so find another line that's got one tick mark and it's got a measurement. That would be line AF or FA. It's got one tick mark. Can I have that? No. Okay, maybe, no. I'm recording a class, be quiet. So, so it would be 18 inches. Okay, so on C, the length of line BC, it's got two tick marks, so you'll find the one that's got two, which would be line FE, and it would be 15 inches. Notice how those are congruent. I'm sorry about the kids in the background. They're running around having a good old time. All right, look at D. Is this an irregular hexagon, octagon, or pentagon? Let's see, it's got one, two, three, four, five. There's six sides, so I would say it would be an irregular hexagon. Octagon has eight, pentagon has five. Penta means five, octa means eight. So hexa, I can always remember hexa because six has an X and so does hex. So that's how I remember it. All right, so on number two, uh, you're gonna use your protractor and you're gonna find the measurement, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> of two of these angles. Now, you're gonna need to get a sheet of paper <clears throat> and you're going to need to trace as best you can that uh, triangle because they've got it really close to the edge of the paper and you can't use your protractor correctly. So if you will trace it really well, remember I showed you that I think last chapter or chapter before that. Um, so you'll have to trace it, mark it, make sure you mark the ABC and you mark the you know everything make it look exactly the same then with a flat piece of paper you'll be able better than to do your measurements but on B it says get the measurement of angle BCA that means C is your vertex that's where you're gonna put the center of your protractor okay and then get the uh, measurement of angle CAB so on that one A is going to be your vertex and you'll get that angle Okay, so get those two angles on um, uh, measurements. On B, draw arc lines to show that angles BCA and CAB are congruent. Okay, so that's what you're going to do on that. Should be pretty easy. All right, um, on, let's see, on number three and four on the back, these are pretty easy pretty simple. I mean, with everything you've learned, you should know, you will have to draw that um, whatever that is. It looks like an envelope, but it's actually supposed to be the side of a shed. But anyway, you'll have to draw that on a piece of paper and put all the exact things on there so that you can better measure, measure it with your protractor on a flat piece of paper on your desk. Okay, and then on four, on the mailbox, it wants you to find the area of the front part of that mailbox. And it tells you that the top of the mailbox is uh, is a semicircle, meaning you'll find the, you'll need to find the circumference and then half it because the circumference is for a full circle. But to find the semicircle, you find the circumference and then you half it. And then you'll find the area of that big rectangle at the bottom. Then you'll just add those two um, 
together, okay? And then you'll also need to find the perimeter of that as well. So you'll have to find the perimeter of the circle and then half that as well, okay? All right, if you need any help, let me know. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna grade this page, so um, anyway, I think you should be able to do it pretty easily. If you need any more help on uh, measuring using your protractor, let me know, and I might be able to find a YouTube video that was better than mine to show you how. So if you need any help, let me know. Or I can just show you. You can come over, I can come over there, and I'll just show you that way. So anyway, that's all for today. Yeah!